Welcome to the College Hockey South YouTube channel and welcome to College Hockey Game Tape presented by Global Synthetic Ice, the official synthetic ice of College Hockey South. I'm your host Gabe Glassman alongside Tyler Moss, Henry Yoho, and newcomer Mason Phelps. Welcome to the table, good sir. Appreciate it, guys. Thank, Thank you so, so much. Glad to be here today. At, we are here at End Market Arena in Savannah, Georgia for the 25th annual Savannah Hockey Classic. Energy is in the room. We are just a few hours away from puck drop. Tyler, what are your what is the energy like? What are you, how are you feeling right now? Cold. I'm a Florida. <laughs> I'm a Florida kid, and geez, I have to go up uh, up north, and I'm I'm dying here. No, I'm just kidding. The energy is great. Uh, just from the hotel room, all the guys that are around there buzzing. The fans are going to be rolling in here soon. I mean, I can't imagine a better place to be in the state of Georgia right now. Twenty five years ago, this tournament started. Henry, this is awesome. What do you think about all this? Oh, man, it's unbelievable. Like, this is my first time here at the Savannah Hockey Classic. I've heard so many great things about the event over the years. And uh, to be able to take it in for the first time at this incredible facility, I mean, this is going to be awesome. And Mason, welcome to the show once again. We didn't have you for the Battle at the Beach, but you're here now. And look, take a look behind. I mean, this is beautiful. The facility is amazing. So, so many, many seats. seats. I, can't I can't wait to see this place, place packed. This is going to be The great. environment's going to be crazy. And tomorrow... One of, one of the four teams is winning this right here trophy right here in front of us. This is very, very, very awesome. But speaking of the teams, these four teams 25 years ago were, these, were the original four teams that first competed in this tournament. And I can't think of a better way to celebrate an anniversary like bringing back the OG4. Tyler, what do you think about that? Uh, it feels proper, right? It, it feels like you, you bring it back to old times. And I know the, the Tennessee program's incredibly excited to be here uh, with their Pat Summit jerseys. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh. Okay. All right. I was, oh, I know it's not for everyone, the, the baby blues, guys. I probably, I know it's on our schedule to go down into a tangent on the baby blues, but my goodness, they look good. Great shout out there to, to the women's basketball program. I love the unity. Well, Love that. Well, speaking of Tennessee, I mean, it's the first time they're back in this tournament since the first year, 25 years ago. Henry, do you think this team is ready to get on the ice here at M Market Arena and get back into it? Oh, yeah, absolutely, and especially when you're going up against a big rival like, like the Gators, you know, going up against the University of Florida in that first game. And these two teams have already played twice already this year, so it's going to be the third time meeting. So they're pretty familiar with one another, and I think that they're going to be ready to go in that rivalry. Well, speaking of that first game uh, with Tennessee and Florida, let's get right into breaking it down for you. Starting off with the Florida Gators, now going into this tournament, these guys are the team to beat. Five-time Savannah Classic winners going for a three-peat. They've won the last two, two tournaments here these last couple of years, so they're looking for a third. They're looking for that dynasty. Tyler, tell me about, tell me about them. Let's see what we got. Yeah, so I think the biggest point throughout this entire tournament, and we're going to highlight it uh, in a few teams' regards, uh, but it's the freshmen, it's the young kids, it's the new kids on the block, the new kids on the team. We're seeing different teams from last year. There's a lot of veteran leadership goes in and out of these teams, especially when they have two programs. Tennessee has a D2 and a D3 program. Same with Florida. Um, we see a lot of cycling in of, of new, fresh talent. Uh, my focus has got to be uh, Keegan Lampinen. I mean, this is a freshman Florida kid, yes, guys, I'm telling you, I, I feel like I tell you every time I talk to you on, on the socials or anything of that regard, there's hockey here in the state of Florida. I, I'm a big proponent of that, and there's a lot of success here in the South. Keegan Lampinen, 13 goals, 8 assists, absolutely cooking. That's just in 12 games. So this man is averaging more than a goal a game. That's something I don't think I could probably reproduce, if I'm being honest, but maybe. I mean, he's, maybe. No, I mean, he's number 11. Hey, Tyler, you're an athlete. You're an athlete. Don't, I do don't think I'm that. an athlete. I don't know if that translates to the ice. Um, <laughs> I'm definitely not putting together what, what Key and uh, Lampinen has done in this in this first 12 games of the season. Oh, yeah, the freshman Gator, I mean, he's 11th in Division Two in points. And what a year so far yeah. he, he had. And, you know, if, and, you know, we're just a month out from Division One playoffs. And, you know, we're a month and a week away from those Division Two playoffs. So he's been a big factor for, for those Gators. Uh, Mason, do you have anything else for us, man? Man, I'm just, I'm, I'm really just excited to see things get physical out here. You know, I know there's a lot of history here and a lot of people are fighting to win. And so I'm, I'm just looking forward to 
see, see people put play. everything on the line. Well, and the two rivalry. I mean, the yeah. rivalry here runs deep in all sports. I mean, I, I know growing up in the state of Florida, there's one team you hate almost more than your in-state rivals, uh, those people in Tallahassee, um, is, is the Big Orange. Uh, and, and that's a huge rivalry in itself. These, these kids know that not only are they trying to win the game, they're trying to win a rivalry. They're, they're, they want their fans going home happy, not getting chirped by the opposing fans on the way out. Henry, can you tell me about how Florida's looking going into this tournament? Yeah. Yeah, no, Florida, you know, they're uh, coming in second place so far in the uh, South Division of uh, Division Two within College Hockey South. Um, I really like, you know, the Gators over the years, you know, coming in, you know, 6-2-0 and uh, this season. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, it was a – you know, a little bit of up and down start to the season, but I kind of like the trajectory that they're heading on right now. And like we talked about, uh, going up against Tennessee, you know, that's a huge rivalry. You know, it's it's really deep rooted. And Florida already beat Tennessee two times this year, so and having to beat a team three times is a pretty steep challenge. And to do it here on neutral ice, uh, it's gonna be a different story after they play the first uh, two games south of here in Jacksonville. Especially seeing how much this Tennessee team has developed. Um, they're one of the best teams in college hockey south. We'll get we'll get talking about them more uh, in a little bit here. But man, Florida's has br- been bringing it to them this season, especially in that first mm-hmm. in that first two game series. But one thing I'm interested to see what Florida brings. Who's gonna be who's gonna be guarding the crease? They got the two amazing goaltenders, Connor Lee and Nathan Shields. Connor Lee, has been you know he's been he's been a blockade eight seventy eight seven six on the save percentage, and in, in only six games plays, they cut both Lee and Shields kind of split those games there. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be interesting to see who starts against Tennessee and who's going to start tomorrow, whether in that third place game or the final. Well, and in, in this league, you got to have two two tendies. I mean, you're playing weekend games. You're playing back-to-backs. Having two strong goaltenders will almost single-handedly change some of the trajectories of your season. If, you, if you've got one guy in there that's consistent and you're beating him down by the time playoffs get around – that's a that's a wounded animal right there. And if you got two guys that are going, uh, and you get them both going now that we've been we've been out of practice for a little bit with the season uh, re uh, con- uh, continuing again, um, yeah, you got to have a couple going. I want to see that. That's a main point. I definitely think we should focus on is that practices not been happening. Can these teams regain the momentum that they had in the fall? Yeah, going back on that, coming through the winter break, just come just jumping right into this tournament. Mm-hmm. Definitely gonna see. Something maybe, maybe something new. Well, anyways, let's move on to the next team in this tournament, and I am talking about the nine-time Savannah Classic champions, the Georgia Bulldogs, the only Division One team heading into this tournament. They're looking for a tenth Savannah Classic championship here. Tyler, uh, sorry, Henry, <laughs> what do we got going on these guys? Yeah, well, I think you said it, Georgia. You know, they're the top dogs here, and. Uh, you know, the, as you mentioned, the only Division One team. I think Georgia comes in as the uh, the clear favorite. Uh, you know, uh, you know, no college football playoff for them, but you know, <laughs> a nice uh, constellation might be the Savannah Hockey Classic. I mean, uh, I couldn't think of a better be, kid mean. consolation prize there. I won't lie to you. Do yeah. You, so, do you take it out on the ice, Mason? I mean, you're you're a rugby guy. Little known fact about you: Do you take this kind of aggression out on the ice if your team doesn't make the college uh, football playoff? Come on. You know, that's tough. I mean. Don't take it out on social media. That's step one. That's step and, one. Uh, you know, <laughs> keep the comment money, section fun, to yourself. You know, have a good time. Of course, of course. <laughs> and uh, I just want to highlight one play, a uh, couple players here. Josh Masaras for the Bulldogs has been lighting it up. He's twelfth in Division One goals with nine. I mean, they, he's the he's the guy when it comes to goals. But when you look at this team, when you look at Georgia's team, you see. You know, nine goals may not be impressive to some. It's because their team, like the, this Georgia Bull, Bulldogs team, gets goals. It doesn't matter who you are. You're going to get to the back of the net. And one more player. We talked about this this duo goaltend, this duo goaltender nice. with Florida. Georgia may do it even better because they have Ryan Destino and Nick Newbold, who are amazing. Guys, we're we're talking tandem goaltending. I mean, in in the NHL, in in maybe a higher professional type league. Um, you're going to get a situation where you have one horse. If you can have a horse and you can ride him, that's great. Uh, but there's a lot of tandems in the NHL as well. I mean, here, this is the league built for tandems, I think. I mean, if you can have two guys going, like I mentioned, it, it's it's going to absolutely take off. I mean, the benefit of being able to switch back and forth, I think it's a, a huge factor, especially for a team like Georgia. I mean, you've got two guys with well over a 9.00 save percentage. 
9-10 and 9-24. Is that, I mean, we, these guys are not letting any pucks through, and I think it may, may tease my pick later. I don't think they're letting very much through tonight either. And this Georgia team is a force to be reckoned with. They're eighth in my hockey rankings, poised to make the playoffs in a month. Henry, what do you, what do you like about this team? What do you like about this Georgia team? I just think that they're just a really deep group, um, you know, an experienced group too. You know, last year they pulled, pulled off the uh, the upset of the tournament at Nationals, defeating the uh, number one ranked team, St. Bonaventure, in the group in the group stage. So these guys, you know, it's an experienced group. They've gone against some top competition and moving up to Division One this year. It's a, a really deep, you know, high quality team, and it's going to be interesting how they uh, come back after the the rest from winter break. It's definitely been interesting to see, and I can't, and I can't wait to see them play on, yeah. on this ice later. Just Mo- oh, sorry. Quick point. I think I think the the trans. Uh, the transferring up to the D1 programs, I think they've done a very good job. I mean, we're seeing one in this tournament. I think we could see a couple more next year. I think a couple more of these teams are ready for that kind of jump. Um, Mason, do you, do you feel like like these teams have acclimated fairly well into the Division One? I? I mean, I, they're they're doing fairly well competing against with these northern schools that have had these programs. Pretty solid. Oh, pr- fantastic. Good, Fantastic. good. Making sure you're alert down there. Are you still, with, alert us? Are you still there. with us, Mason? I have to, I have to poke you a couple times just to make sure you're still here. I don't know if Mason's here. It was a long drive here to Savannah. Oh, my goodness. Talk, <laughs> talk about I-95. Oh, tell you goodness. What. First time in Savannah, I have never seen a better place to be. Come on. All, all historic buildings. It's beautiful out here. Beautiful. And uh, sorry about that winter weather. I wish it was sunny out, but. We no. couldn't bring it down from Florida, folks. We do Sorry apologize. That, yeah, but, you know, just just to mention real quick before we move on to talk about Georgia Tech, you talk about moving up and new teams here and there. Well, how about the College Hockey South introducing five new teams coming to the D3? To, sorry, three teams going to men's D3 and two new teams going to that beloved women's division. And then you have a few moving up. You have a bunch of realignment. One of, the, one of those... I will mention that U Miami D3 D2, then the, Miami's going to get another D3 team on top of that. It's it's a it's a great day to be a fan of College Hockey South, ladies well, and yeah, gentlemen. And, and Miami did a great job rebuilding, kind of restarting with their program. A little bit above playing above water last year, just barely floating. Step down, re, regroup yourself together, play some great hockey, jump back up. You're ready for it now. They're ready. They're ready to be back in that D2 division. Bring in a D3 team. I'm, I love it. I love it. I love all. I love every bit of it. Now let's just move on before we get too sucked into that subject. I'm talking about Georgia Tech, the eight-time Savannah Classic champions, going into this. And guys, 25 years ago, this Georgia Tech team, they were the team that started it all, the, the inaugural champions. Henry, what do you like about this team? Yeah, well, Georgia Tech has been a, a bit of a rough season so far. You know, coming in with just two wins on the season, but. You know, coming out of the winter break, like we've been talking about, you know, it's a chance to hit the reset button. You know, it's a, a neutral site, playing here in a tournament uh, environment, and going up against your rival. Like, it's a it's a great opportunity to kind of get a fresh start in the season and kind of start anew. Absolutely. And Mason, you know, you're an athlete. You're a rugby guy. And when a team is down, you know, this Georgia Tech team, like Henry said, has been a little bit lackluster. So they're looking for some magic late on in this season when a team is down what's the message in that locker room to keep going usually it's a believing in your coaches and a believe believe in the guys beside you you know I'm, I'm a big guy for underdog stories and i i really think whenever you're representing yourself in your home state something as big as this tournament i really think they're going to bring it to them tyler who's one player that has just been outstanding for georgia tech yeah uh i want to start uh with uh uh cullen uh Dor- Dorsis, Dors- Dorcas. We're trying here with names. <laughs> My goodness, you know. On, on honestly, right now. I should be a little bit. I should get on the Duolingo. I'll tell you that I've <laughs> got to get that going. Uh, but being being in from Tampa, I should know at least the Russian names. I can't even get the American names down uh, these days. It's killing me. Uh, Duolingo though, Mason. Shout out. No shout free out ads me. though. Seven goals, six assists, eleven games played. He's putting up points. So one thing this team can depend on is just get pucks to the net get points this is going to be a very difficult georgia team to take down you're not going to do it without scoring the puck i doubt you're going to be able to hold them shut out you're not going to hold them down to one maybe two goals you're going to have to score you're going to have to run with them if you want this to uh you want this to really be a game and and mason i want to ask i mean colin roberts the coach of georgia tech he's in the locker room you're prepared to play a d1 team you've been relatively bottom of the barrel of d2 you're playing way above competition What's that? What's that pregame speech? What's the motivation? What are you saying? 
So last season with uh, USF Rugby, we traveled to Houston and played against uh, some big California teams. You know, they have scholarships, they have funding, they have planes, they have buses. And really, it's just believing in yourself and knowing that you put in the work and you prep to be here. That's the most important thing. If you don't think you can win, you won't. And so coming in here and just having your head high, chest up, and be ready to play. That's Mindset. honestly what I'm looking for out of them today. Mindset. I'm Love a it. sucker for an underdog story. <laughs> well, maybe we'll see that underdog story, the Cinderella story, play out in this tournament. Let's move on to our final team. It is the it is Tennessee representing those beautiful baby blue jerseys. Oh. I mean, I'm a fan. I, I'm so sad we couldn't get one up here on set, but Come on. you're gonna you're gonna see them later on the ice. They're fantastic. Beauties. But going into the actual play of Tennessee, it's their first year back. It, it's their first year back in the Savannah Classic since the first tournament 25 years ago. So they and they didn't win. Georgia Tech won that. So they're still looking for their first Savannah Classic championship. And guys, I think this is the year Tennessee pulls it out. And let me tell you why. That's they got bold. this they got this guy named Connor Frazier. Mm -hmm. 16 goals, 12 assists, 16 games. That ranks first in goals. Come on. Second in points. Come on. He's going up for MVP Ooh. MVP talks right now. He's been unstoppable, just like his team. I mean, what more do you want to see from Tennessee? What more do they have to do? to clinch this trophy right here. You know what Connor reminds me of? Funny enough, he's coaching on the bench now. He's wearing a suit, like us. No longer in, in the in the jersey, no longer in the sweater, uh, the gear, none of that. He's actually on the bench, and it's their past captain from last year's team, Drew King, their current coach. Amazing leadership. I feel like this is a reinvigorated Tennessee. I know some of the competition moved up, some of the, that steeper competition that was kind of holding them back last year. I feel like this is a new reinvigorated team. Drew King has been phenomenal for them. Uh, the leadership tactics that he's employed, uh, starting 0-2 on the season, that's a really tough place to be for a new head coach. You want that first win. You want it out of there. You want to get get it out of there, get it out of the way. Great, get your, get your ice bath and let's move on. Um, really difficult. But then when he finally got his first home game, back in early October against USF when he put a whooping on those team that team from South Florida 10 to 1 that's when it took off it clicked like something that was happening in the practices finally came through Drew King a little bit of an x-factor I think behind the bench uh, in regards to uh, what's going on tonight I think that win put the league on notice honestly a little bit yeah a little bit because when you go when you go on and you go and you go beat a team like that something sums up and something's clicking because this team is looking unstoppable right now and in my opinion if it wasn't for FAU and their division two team and their and how they have played I would say this Tennessee team is the team to beat in college hockey's out Henry what do you think yeah no I agree I mean they're you know they're top dogs right now in the uh, the north division of division two within college hockey south and like we mentioned, it was a bit of a tough start to the season, but it seemed like that game against USF kind of got them heading in the right direction. And like you mentioned, you mentioned Frazier, you know, kind of leading the way for them in points. You know, 28 points in, in 16 games. And they got five guys on their team who are at or over a point a game on the season. Like, this is, this is a group that's got a bunch of guys that can score, and they got a lot, of, a lot going right now. So it's going to be interesting to see what they got, you know, coming off the break. Mason, what do you see in this team? That's tough. I mean... I'm a Georgia Tech fan here today, oh. but uh, Tennessee, fantastic jerseys. I really hope that they debut them today and uh, maybe get a dub or two. That'd be pretty nice, but um, I don't know, man. We'll, we'll see. I know I know that's your team today, but um, <laughs> we'll see tomorrow how that goes out. Well, I guess maybe we'll have a little bit, that's a little foreshadowing maybe to what we have for Pickums, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to the best part of the show. On your screen right now, we have our we have mine, Tyler, and Henry's overall records from two months ago at the Battle at the Beast Tournament. You see that I kind of had a better showing than both of you guys. I don't want to talk both about it. Both of you three and Much six. Better. Don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Mason, you're new to this, so we're going to start off with Fresh you. Start. Let's start off with Vanderbilt D D Division Two versus Clemson Division Two. Mason. Oh, we're going Vandy all the way. All the way. All the way. Ooh, okay. Henry, what we got? 
Uh, I like Clemson. You know, they're second place in that North Division right now. I think that I like what they've got going on, and I'm going to roll with the Tigers. I'm also going Clemson. I think they've had a really good year. Bandy is on one of those lackluster seasons, so I think Clemson's at home. It should be an easy one for them tonight. Tyler? Yeah, Clemson hurt my heart last time. Um, <laughs> I won't. I wouldn't say it's an emotional wound, but it's an emotional wound. Uh, I'm picking Clemson again because I just can't forget them. I just can't. I can't let it go. You know, Taylor Swift song. There's got to be one about this, right? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe we'll see her tonight. Know. Travis Kelsey around? I don't know. We'll see. We'll we see. don't know. Travis Kelsey has a game tomorrow against the Miami Dolphins. Oh, there's game, always time for the Savannah. Twenty-three degree wind chill. Classic game. Always time. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the Division Three matchup of Florida versus North Florida. Mason, we'll start with you. Oh, we're going UNF all the way. Okay, it's a close game. He goes UNF. They are at home. Henry, who do you got? Yeah, UNF, a new program here in uh, College Hockey South Division Three. I'm going to roll with North Florida. I'll go with the Ospreys as well. I like North Florida. I, re I think they're at home. It's a close game, close matchup, but that home ice advantage UNF plays closer to, to their arena than Florida does for their home arena. So yes. I think UNF pulls this one in an upset fashion slightly. Tyler, what we got? Yeah, so here's the trick. Both of these teams are secretly the home team. If you don't know anything <laughs> about the Florida traveling schedule, it's maybe the worst in the conference. Maybe you should look at getting some global synthetic ice in there. Maybe. That's just me personally. Uh, but I'm going with Joey Ecker and what he's brought from a presidential standpoint. And Mike Marchinowicz ski. That's what we're going with. Lock it in. Duolingo. And that is who is building that Jacksonville program up. I'm going UNF. So we have Osprey. a clean sweep of UNF. That is quite awesome right now. Let's move on as the music gets louder as we get closer to that first puck drop. Let's it's move live. It's, <laughs> it's live. <laughs> Let's move on real quick to Auburn. Versus Tampa D1. Mason, let's go to you. Uh, um, unpopular. I know I'm, I'm from there. But sorry, Tampa, I'm picking Auburn. Ooh! Let's you see know, how that one ages. Okay, okay. Henry, the Tampa man. What do we got? Yeah, it's a all Division One matchup, you know, coming out of the gate in the uh, with the first rivalry weekend kind of. So, you know, I like the Spartans. They're going through a bit of a coaching transition right now, but I think that they're a... Uh, probably the best team so far and i like the spartans too they've had a great year they're they're gonna do some great things this month leading up to the playoffs i like tampa they're at home i like them in this game tyler yeah i think mason's celebrating gasparilla a little too early there picking <laughs> auburn uh, i gotta lock in the tampa d1 program seems like a fair lock to me mason, uh, alone, huh? i feel like it's kind of a, a one-sided chip here it's right okay now. stand on the island buddy hey man i'll, I'll stay where the winners are at well, that's, whoa. 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 well let's see where you're at with this one we're going out of conference here farmingdale state division one first fau's division two team mason what do you got so i'm gonna pick farmingdale you know <laughs> I, my grandparents they're farmers that's where i grew up so i mean Gotta, gotta go that your game. Basis on this I, that's a game pick right there. I'm, <laughs> I'm a little concerned you might not know where Farmingdale oh, State I, I College I is. Really <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a little concerned. We're not talking Kansas anymore, Mason. Hey, We're talking upstate New York, buddy. It's a little different. Uh, my pick, um, come on, I'm staying in the state of Florida. It's been my biased all show, FAUD2. And I'm liking... Uh, I am also liking FAU Division Two. Um, I think they pull it out. I think this FAU D2 team we saw that we've seen this team all year go up against heavy hitters. We've questioned them, and they've proven us wrong time after time. They're going to prove us wrong against Farmingdale State. Henry. Yeah, no, I really like Farmingdale. They're a really good program up there in Long Island. Um, but, you know, I got to wave the flag a little bit for College Hockey South, so I'm going to roll with Florida Atlantic. All right, all right. College Hockey, College Hockey South representing here besides Mason. Uh, <laughs> Farmersville over there. Well, we got to support the local farmers. Well, let's move on to that mighty, mighty women's division. It's Georgia versus Auburn. Guys, Auburn's still looking for their first win, and they get it. They get it this weekend against Georgia at home. War Eagle, let's go. Tyler, what we got? The day I pick against the Auburn women's team will be the day I can't even utter the words War Eagle anymore. Jack Rosenhammer, my favorite coach in all of the conference, growing the sport of hockey for women in Alabama. 
Let's roll with it. Auburn. Let's do it. All right. Henry, what do we got? I mean, we're in the state of Georgia, so I gotta go. You're with going it. with the hometown team? Yeah, I gotta go with the, the, we're the right dogs. All right, oh. we're gonna go with the All dogs right. on Jason, that what we got? Yeah. You know, I picked them once, and I'll pick them twice. I'm picking Auburn again. Here we go. It's gonna be a great weekend over there in Auburn. They're they're throwing those toilet paper on the trees. Thing. Oh yeah, yeah. it's gonna Rumors be Rumors Corner or something. I don't know. Auburn Tumors. may storm the ice after this. I think they're I think they're gonna have a great game. Could be. Let's move on. It's we're moving out of the conference again. Northwestern ACHA D3 versus the Tampa Spartans Division Two. Henry. We'll start with you this time. Let's yeah, I know. We got to, you know, we waved the flag already for College Hockey South. We got to wave the flag again for AAU College Hockey, Tampa D2 all the Wait, way again. You see this logo right here. You see it right there. I'm going Tampa D2 over Northwestern. Uh, you got to represent. But once again, it's, I think it's because Tampa's Division II team is also very, very good this year. And I think they're going to bring it to Northwestern. Mason, we'll go to you. You know, I, I went against Tampa once, and I'm also going to do that twice. And so uh, we're going to go to Northwestern today. Okay. Tyler, what we got here? Mason, I'm a little concerned you may be <laughs> geographically biased here. Um, we're, we're picking the farmers. We're picking the Northwesterners. You know, I, man, I'm a bull. I, I can't root for inner city rivals. You know? Hilariously, how Northwest is the state of Illinois? Couldn't, couldn't tell you, honestly. I'm going with my second Jack pick for coach, Jack Walsh and the Tampa D2 team. Thank you. Good luck. All right. Well, Jack let's Walsh. move on to what I think is the game of the week outside of this Savannah Classic. It's a Division One rivalry, South Carolina versus Alabama. Man, Alabama's been in the news recently, huh, guys? <laughs> uh, but they, but you know, I think they make headlines again because they're because they're beating South Carolina this weekend. I'm taking roll. I'm taking Alabama roll tide. Mason, what do we got over here? You know, I'm gonna be with you on that one. I'm taking Bama. You know, big loss, but uh. They need one this weekend. They really do. All right. Henry? Yeah, this is a great matchup. You know, we had the other Division One matchup with Tampa and Auburn. We got another All-Division One matchup. Uh, I'm going to take South Carolina and roll with cock hockey on this one. All right. Tyler, what do we got? I don't want to get too cocky with my pick. Oh. <laughs> oh, I hate it just as much as you do at home. I'm going to go South Carolina here. Lock it in. Okay. So with that, with that all set down, guys, it is time. Savannah Classic. Pickums. It's time. SEC showdown. We're gonna go real quick. The SEC showdown. T Tennessee versus Florida. Mason, go. Tennessee, all the way. All right, Henry. I'm going with the Volunteers as well. Let's let's go Tennessee, baby. I'll stand alone. Let's go Gators. Oh! Ooh! Ooh! Ooh. Ooh. Chop it up. No, chop, chop it up. It up. Right no, over I, left. I, I, I know I, the rules. I went Gators last time, but I love those baby blues. I Come think Tennessee on. brings it out. Jersey bias. All right, one more game that we're gonna talk about. It's the rivalry. It's the one that everyone's excited for. Georgia versus Georgia Tech. Tyler? You're a rambling wreck from Georgia Tech. I think you are a wreck tonight. Georgia's going to take care of business. Come on. It's too easy. As once again, oh, last time on the show, I was asked not to bark. This time, I am also not barking. But I am still picking the Georgia Bulldogs. Let's go, Henry. Yeah, I'm going to take the dogs as well. I got burned at the Battle of the Beach by not picking against the favorites, so I'm not going to go down that way twice in a row uh, like I did with Florida Atlantic that time, so I'm going to go with Georgia. All right, Mason, what do we got over here? You know, I'm an underdog. Call me Rudy. I'm picking Georgia Tech. Okay. I'm all alone, but hey, we'll see what happens. Stand on that podium. Stand on that Hold podium. It. I'll be Stand on that podium. Well, guys, that is all the time we're going to have today. Thank you so much for joining us. Puck Drop is in just an hour of this of this show release for Mason Phelps, Henry Yoho, Tyler Moss, I'm Gabe Glassman, and boys, it is time for game time. Global Synthetic Ice is the longest operating company in the industry with over 25 years of innovation and experience. The company brings the feel of skating on real ice to wherever you can think of. With its sleek and functional design, the Synthetic Ice is perfect for indoors, outdoors, and anywhere you can fire a slap shot. For decades, the question has always been, how do you get kids to play hockey in a state like Florida? How do you make it affordable for kids to get involved with hockey with the ever-rising costs that traditional facilities charge for ice time? Global Synthetic Ice has the answer. Make the game available for everyone, everywhere. Six-time Stanley Cup champion Mark Messier, Tampa Bay Lightning captain Steven Stamkos, and old Lightning fan favorite Marty St. Louis are all big fans of the product 
and how it can help bring hockey to kids everywhere. There are glowing endorsements from NHLers and referees which should show how a product like this can make change. Even legendary referee and analyst Kerry Frazier loves the synthetic stuff. He says, oh my gosh, it's just like real ice. Global Synthetic Ice has helped grow the game through innovation and enables more youth participation in skill development. Thanks again to Global Synthetic Ice for sponsoring our Battle of the Beach tournament. Here's to a great weekend. I gotta tell you, I'm really pretty nervous. This is the first time that I've stepped on Global Synthetic Ice. I hear that it's the same as real ice, but I feel like Bambi stepping on the legs for the first time. Let's check it out, and I'll get back to you.